morning. Welcome into a new episode of Vegetables Matter. This is the summer 2022 episode, and it's been really interesting now that I've switched from um, filming once a month to once a season. It's quite interesting to sit down and, and prepare what I want to share with you um, because a season is, is, is a long time and it really, um, yeah, I really have to think back where I was, um, back in the spring and you know, what, what, where I, yeah, where I am now, what I've been working on. Um, the theme that has emerged this round is pairs or duos. So, um, I'll be sharing things, uh, kind of one thing that's finished and one thing that, that I'm working on that are, that are similar. So, um, well, another thing is I've definitely, overall this season, although perhaps not at the beginning, but overall this season, it, I have not been super inspired by fiber. I've definitely had projects on the go, but I, I don't just have like a fire lit under me like I sometimes do. I'm just like, oh, I've got so much, to, you know, I don't know. I, I can I can really get excited about stuff. And this time it's just kind of like, oh, you know, what to work on now. Okay, here's a little thing. Um, it is really important during certain activities that I do to have something to work on. But other than that, like I haven't had a burning desire for finished objects perhaps. Um, so, and I, I think a big part of that is the season right now, which I don't think happens every year. Uh, I know a couple of years ago when I filmed, it was kind of in May, it was, uh, it was a flurry of creativity. So feeling that spring energy and all the creativity that goes with it. But I do think it's common for me to be pretty focused on garden uh, during this time. And so that that is where my passion is. I, I just want to be in the garden all the time. So um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. But I will share these projects, including the garden at the end. Um, Okay, so to get started, what I'm working on right here, this doesn't totally fit into that duo. However, if I want to stretch it, I can because uh, for years now, I've I've wanted to make two sweaters in a year. I'm like, okay, my goal is to make two sweaters, and I just did it and didn't it and didn't. And finally, this year, it's like, okay, I'm going to be making two sweaters. And so I made the Icelandic sweater that I showed last time, the time before. Must have been last time. I would have had it finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was working, I reworked the neck, all of that stuff. So I'd finished that and then I had some yarn set aside and a pattern. So I was really ready to, to get going on this, on this new sweater. <coughs> this is a cardigan for my sister and, um, shoot, I'm not going to remember all the names. It's the school teacher's cardigan. It's more of a recipe, she says, although it feels like a pattern to me. Um, by, I want to say Melanie, someone, uh, shoot, I've even like watched her little videos about stuff, but I'm not quite sure. So, uh, this is where I'm at now. Um, I have most of the body and most of a sleeve. I still have a full other sleeve and the whole, uh, button band. Um, plus, I'm, I'm a little bit stuck because I'm using Plotulopi, which is this unspun yarn, so it just breaks really easily. Um, but it, it's pretty fun to work with, although it can be a little bit of a hassle. You can't just like yank on your yarn, it's just going to break, so you have to be a little delicate with it. Um, I guess, yeah, so as I, as I got to nearing the bind off at the at the bottom of the sweater um i was wondering how to bind off because i think it was recommending a tubular bind off but i knew i mean you can't sew with this because it would just it's just gonna break it's not strong enough to sew with uh, you have to be kind of just pulling through each loop not just like pulling through the whole thing and expecting that to to stay strong that's not going to happen so i was asking a friend who's much more knowledgeable um in general and particularly with Lotulopi and uh, he recommended well a few different options uh, holding it double with a lace weight um, kind of for those areas that need that extra reinforcement 
just to make it stronger, make it easier to mend, all of that. Or he also suggested possibly uh, spinning this. Um, and I could even spin it thinner and do a, a two-ply, so that way I would have the exact same color. It would be a different texture, but the exact same color. So I was just going to spin it up a little bit because I didn't think that I had that much to do. But then I realized that I think I actually want the whole button band to be stronger. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so, anyway, I'm, I'm just kind of on pause um, on that. I'm, I'm just kind of working away on a sleeve. It's warm. It's hot. I'm not working a lot on this anyway. It's a nice cool morning, so I can have it out. There are times when it's working. But... It's, it's not the season for this. So I feel okay to give myself some time and, and find the, the proper yarn to make this strong at those points of, of more wear. So um, definitely slowing down on this. My goal was to get it done by my sister's birthday next month. I knew that I might not do that because it's warm weather. Her birthday's in July. Um, but I feel like I've got a really good start. And actually with this sleeve... Um, I don't quite know how long it's, she wants it. So I, my goal is to just kind of keep plugging away on it. I'll probably stop on this sleeve and start on the other sleeve at some point, um, just to kind of be working away. And then on her birthday, I'll share that this is the project and then she can give me some actual measurements and I'll go from there and I'll finish it up in, in the cooler weather. So that's the idea at this point, which feels good. Um, it's been great to work on another sweater. This coming uh, cool season, I, I really want to just keep working on sweaters because they're really, really a great thing to have. So um, I'm really happy that, that I've been focused on that this year and making it happen. Okay, so that is kind of the, the big main project that I've been working on. bit of a sniffly. Okay, so next thing. So the next thing is, oh, I have a finished object. Um, so my notes on this are socks and socks. <laughs> the finished object is indeed dun, 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 a pair of socks. These are just uh, knit in the round, all the way around, um, toe up, two at a time, magic loop, uh, two by two ribbing at the top. I, I don't really know the, the different names of heels, but it's the one, there's no like heel flap because it's toe up, right? I don't know if you can have a heel flap if it's toe up. I don't know. It's, there's some recipe that I found early on and, and I've, I kind of go back to it. So um, whatever that is, because I do like doing toe-up socks. I think it's nice. And I do like two at once. Anyway, so I've been just slowly knitting away on these. I think I started them in December, January, and just kind of been knitting, knitting along whenever I need a small project. And yeah, and yeah, finally got those finished up and the ends just about woven up. I, I think I have all the ends woven in, but there is just a little bit of like gappiness um, at some of some of this heel gusset, <clears throat> and so I've just been kind of uh, reinforcing. And I think I still have a little bit more to do of that, but I could probably stop right now too. So um, I I love these. I think the colors are just gorgeous. Uh, this was just. Um, well, I've been doing this new thing where when I go to my local yarn store, I just go to the clearance. Um, and, you know, people just have stuff, I think, from their stash that it's like, oh, I'm just, it's time to get rid of this. So I've been picking up a few sock yarns that way. Um, I don't normally knit with superwash, with nylon, that kind of stuff. But I knit socks without that, and then I, I just get holes really quickly. So uh, I just thought, well, well, and then one time I did buy, like, a really expensive um, skein of sock yarn. I was like, okay, let's just try it that way. It was like twenty dollars, and I'm like, I don't really want to spend twenty dollars and then and then knit, you know, and then take so many hours to knit a pair of socks. Like that's just not that feasible. So anyway, I've been going to the clearance and just kind of seeing what other people are getting rid of. So I think someone had actually already started this yarn in these like uh, little kid booties or something, and there was a pattern and everything in there. And 
I didn't want it for that. I just wanted to, to make a pair of socks. So um, I have this. Yeah, I, I think these are probably like the cutest socks ever. <laughs> I think they might be my favorite. Um, I guess I've done some with like cables and stuff, which is fun too. But uh, just the, these colors are fantastic. So really, really happy to have these. Um, yeah, lovely pair of socks. So then I have started my next pair. Again, this was just with some clearance yarn at, at Heinzelman's in Provo. <coughs> I don't know. <coughs> Got a little something in my throat. So this is just this really vivid green. It's a little intense, um, but it actually has been kind of fun to work on this summer. Um, I actually, did I start them? Yeah, I started them when we were up on Boulder Mountain. There were lots of aspen trees. There's obviously lots of other um, pine trees and stuff, but those are a darker green, and it really was the aspen trees that are like, they really are this vibrant and lovely. So I decided, because it is a little bit boring, to just do plain socks, and it can be nice sometimes, but I thought, you know, I, I think let's try a pattern sock. So I've, I've chosen out a pattern. I completely forget what it is. There's just like a little lace on either side, um, and it's starting me top down. So I'm, I'm doing this. I've just started on a bit of twisted rib, one by one twisted rib. It's funny, I've only ever done one by one twisted rib. People probably don't ever do two by one or two by two twisted rib, but I wonder what that looks like. Hmm. Anyway, um, yeah, so again, not planning to like brush on these at all. This socks are very long term, just kind of fitting them in, in between things when I just, you know, there's just like a niche that socks fill. And so um, I, I do appreciate that. Oh, for, for these, I did learn some new bind off cast on techniques. This, I there's a chance I've done it before. It was basically like a tubular cast off, but for two by two ribs, so you basically are just splitting the, the knit and purl stitches on two different needles. So it's basically the same as just like a, a Kitchener or a tubular bind off. Um, yeah, so, but that was good to, to kind of add that to my repertoire. Oh, that's what I do when it's two by two and I want really stretchy. And it is really stretchy. I'm, I'm impressed because I've done like the Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off in the past. And I don't know, for me, it, it still doesn't seem quite stretchy enough. I should maybe revisit it, but I don't know. So I did that. Okay. <clears throat> And then for this, oh yeah, it wanted me to do a Norwegian cast on. And so I did. Super stretchy. In fact, I wonder if it's excessively stretchy. I feel like my long tail cast on is already quite stretchy. I don't know if it would be sock appropriate, but I kind of think it would be. And so the Norwegian is basically, it's very similar to the long tail cast on, but you, you kind of have to just twist the stitch an extra time and so they say that twist just gives it that extra stretch um so yeah these are really stretchy and yeah we'll see what happens with these um I, like i said i have a pattern picked up picked out with with a bit of lace on it i'm not a hundred percent like this is for sure what's going to happen because you know a pattern sock doesn't end up showing up as well doesn't pop as well when you have a bit of a variegated yarn and so I'll, I'll give it a try, see if I like it, um, or maybe I would just go more straight stock in it, or even just something like a little bit more textured, like I've never done Hermione's everyday socks, so maybe I could do something like that. I don't know if they're toe up or, you know, or, or toe up or cuff down, <clears throat> but um, I don't know, we'll see. But those are in the works and that feels good to have another little project on the go. I'm, <laughs> so my goal with these, uh, my husband and I, we, we do a, a solstice and equinox trip, so four trips um, during the year as we're documenting different um, astronomy stuff, cultural astronomy stuff, kitty cat. <clears throat> um, and so I, so far I've filmed before we head out on the trip and then I edit it after we come back. So it's always just right around the solstice and equinox. And so we're actually heading out today 
<laughs> I'm trying to sneak this in and I've got a lot to do. Um, anyway, so I have been kind of preparing my projects for this trip, so socks. Okay, next thing. Oh yeah, another finished item. This one was finished a while ago, so it doesn't feel like a finished item to me anymore. Uh, whereas the socks, I'm, you know, I'm not even 100% done with the, with the weaving and ends. I maybe just have one more little area to work on. Okay, so the next is another pair. I believe last time I showed one pair. But another pair of these sparrow mitts. Hey, kitty. I'll put them on for good measure. Look at that. You are so sweet. Sweet little kitty. Sweet little kitty cat. This is Neo. Neo came to us during Comet Neowise. The first day we saw Neowise, this little kitty showed up. Yeah. She is darling. <laughs> okay, so these are done. This is yarn from uh, Navalonk Farm, which I, I've used a lot of their yarn, um, spun up by Spinderellas, so all very local to me. And this is the second pair that I've made of this pattern, and I have plans to make a third, although I'm a little bit bored by them now, so I, I have changed it up because, of course, they have a duo. I have a little match, my finished object, and then my, my working object. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, just a really nice little pattern. Um, I'm just trying to get mitts out to lots of people that I love. So I gave that first pair to my sister-in-law, and this pair will go to my other sister-in-law. Well, I've got lots of sisters-in-law, but sisters-in-law, yeah. Um, yeah, but they are sisters to each other. So my, my husband's older sisters. Um, kind of starting out in the extended family with them, and kind of going from there. So cute good little pattern um, the first the first pair that I did I did them uh, just one and then the other which I think is good to do because basically it's like your gauge as well so you, you don't really want to start both um, you don't want to start both at the same time because uh, then if it screws up, you know, then there's just more work. So I did one and then the other, but by this time I, I had it down. And so I cast them on at the same time and it worked so much better because then I could just pay attention to when I needed to cross the cables just once <laughs> instead of twice, you know? And so that, it just was a lot smoother. Um, so I'll definitely do that if I do these again in the future. Lovely pattern. Okay. Um, so my current mitts that I'm working on, I was working on and it really stopped, but it's time to just move forward on them, are these heart mittens, and I forget, actually not mittens, they are also mitts, I forget um, who the designer is, but as you can see there's a cute little heart emblem. Again, this is yarn from Navalong Farm, spun up by Spinderella. Corydale. I'm not sure if the other's Corydale or not. Uh, this one's worsted weight, whereas that's. Uh, I'm not good with my weights, uh, either sport or DK. Um, so this is nice and thick. This one's a three ply. It's super squishy and plush. I've made other projects. I've made other colorwork projects with this. Nothing just straight up with it. Just a really nice brown color. So. Uh, the reason I've stopped is right now it would be time to, to switch to the mitt and like do a little bit of ribbing. And I've just hesitated um, thinking about possibly making these for my friend and she's more interested in mittens. She has some mitts already. And she's like, yeah, that's covered, but she, she's interested in mitts. So I'm not quite sure if I want to make these for her or find a different pattern for her. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I just kind of froze and said, Go away for a while and but it's time to just make a decision either make the mitts or make the mittens i'm probably just going to make the mitts follow the pattern and just move on and find another pattern for her 
and I, I kind of want color work for her, but we'll see. So that's the idea. So I'll be working on these, finish this one up. Yeah, and then work on the other. These have been a lot faster than even the other ones, which still are crazy um, long because, uh, anyway, these are just worth your weight. So, uh, yeah, they've been knitting up fast. Oh, I also spent a lovely morning with that friend. We just like, we were backpacking and we were heading out that, that morning. We kind of needed to get back, although none of us had anything pressing and we just ended up staying by the stream and knitting all morning long and it was blissful oh my gosh it was that was such a beautiful morning <laughs> so well worth it um oh, that does make me want to just make these for her maybe i will make her these next week uh okay the last thing this darling kitty The last thing that I'm going to talk about is another finished object, um, and then I'm going to be making another one. So I don't have the object here, but I'll insert a picture of baby Yoda. Uh, my niece just had a baby, and actually three days ago, today's the 16th, born on the 13th, um, and so I am now a great aunt for the first time. Uh, so yeah, the first of a, a, of a new generation. And so um, I made, uh, that family just loves Star Wars. <laughs> so I made a Baby Yoda uh, plushie for, or um, Amiguru, um, Amigurami, Amigurami, Amigurumi, Amigurumi. Um, yeah, Baby Yoda, Amigurumi for her, for the baby. Um, so here's a picture. Turned out well, although it was really stressful. Uh, I'm not very good with all those details, and it just, I would just kind of have to like look at it and hold it and be unhappy with it and undo and <laughs> redo and just kind of freeze and, and hold it for a while. So that, that took a while. So I knew that I, with the leftovers, I figured I had used about half. I made no measurements, so I might just be screwing myself over and, and not really have enough yarn. But it felt like about half of the yarn and so I just thought when I bought the yarn I was like I think I'll be able to make two out of this so honestly it was stressful enough that after I did I was like well maybe not but now I've been searching for projects to bring I'm like okay let's use up that yarn it's just sitting there let's use it up so I've got the yarn I've got the pattern um and I'll probably be working on this on this trip uh, yeah, it'll be cute. People did really ooh and ah over it. Um, it did turn out really cute. <laughs> Although it almost didn't. It was looking so ugly for a while, and then I just kept working on it, and then it turned out really cute. So hopefully I have enough yarn. I think I'll make it work, but I might. I might not. We'll see. Voila. Okay. <laughs> and... The thing I really want to be working on, I've been scrounging up these projects, but the thing I really want to be working on that like does make me feel really motivated are dishcloths, washcloths. I just want to knit those. It just feels like time, but I don't have yarn for it. So maybe on this trip I can find some. Um, I've only made, I've got cat hair. I've made dishcloths, well, one other session of dishcloths making. I made four. From, it was in an episode, like a February episode, I want to say. Um, I made, well, it would have been later than February. I made four dishcloths previously with a yarn that I just really loved, and they turned out so cute, and I felt so good about it. It was a recycled denim. It's a uh, wool in the gang, Billie Jean something. Recycled denim. It's just super cute. I just felt really good about that. And I've, I've looked at buying it again, but I could only get two washcloths out of one skein, and it's expensive. And again, I just couldn't really justify spending that much money. But I need to figure out something, because I want to make washcloths. So I actually have a little bit left over from those that I made, so I'm bringing that on the trip as well. 
and I might, so yeah, we'll see. Uh, yeah. So, washcloths. <clears throat> Another thing I'm dreaming of are uh, kitchen towels. I, I've been wanting to weave them, and it's getting close. I think when I get back from this trip sometime in July, probably July, um, I'm going to warp up for that and get my table loop warped for the first time. I've had it a couple years, haven't used it yet. I'm really excited about that as well. I'll let you know more about that next time. Um, garden stuff. I don't know that I want to talk so much about it. Um, I have a little garden space set up here, which is cool. I'll throw in some pictures. I've also been uh, going over to a local farmstead and helping out there. And that's been really awesome. Um, you know, in Torrey, where I am, it's it's hard to grow here. It's, it's high elevation, it's cold, it's windy, it's extreme, and it's sand. <laughs> um, not like nutrient rich soil it's let me show you it's sand <laughs> so um yeah so i'm i am putting some effort in here but i really was was just wanting to throw my efforts into someone who's already been working on it making it work and just like pooling efforts together rather than than like independently not working as well so it felt really good um it's, it's a really gorgeous place uh and i really enjoy spending time there just working 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 so i was there yesterday morning and yeah we planted we got like a whole trellis set up and we planted cucumbers and beans and anasazi beans um which she kind of was doing for me actually she was yeah because i have been helping out um she was like well what, you know what, what kinds of things do you like and i, I mentioned that we do eat a lot of beans so dried beans um i'm not i don't totally know what to do with green beans so um yeah we she yeah we decided to do the the beans and cucumbers together um, kind of trellising up together and the beans can provide that nice uh, nitrogen for the cucumbers and anyways we got that all in plus a bunch of radishes and carrots farther on and then um what else Oh yeah, I dug a big trench for potatoes, and my friend Amy has also been helping out, and yeah, she was planting lots of melons, so, uh, and then in the past, last week I was planting some tomatoes, tons of tomatoes, and peppers, and cabbages, and broccoli, and cauliflower, so uh, it's really exciting, it's a sweet part, so it's a massive food effort. Photos photos. Happy solstice. Um, what is this season bringing for you? Where Where is your focus? Gardening projects, fiber projects, other projects, work, exhaustion, fun. What, what's going on in your life? Um, please share. I do really like to hear from you. And I, uh, I really appreciate you coming here, watching, and I look forward to doing this again next time, although I still have the whole edit to do. So edit, 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 send it out into the world, and um, hopefully make some nice connections with people. So here's my documentation of my season. Love you much. Bye-bye.